himself. And I would basically do that. It was a late night show, and I would just call him, um, do you have any klezma music? And man, we don't have klezma music. It's a college radio station. Well, I think you should expose the young people to the klezma music. It's culturally, you know, blah, blah. So I, would, I had a voice demo tape when I was done with college, and I used that to get an agent in Hollywood. I'm going to step you through the career a little bit, and then I'm going to deconstruct how, well, some takeaways, basically, that you can apply to any sort of creative life. I knew I wanted to do voiceovers, not just because of that experience in radio for myself, but because my father uh, was, a, he built his psychological practice as a radio psychologist, talk radio psychologist. People would call him with their problems, and he would you know, address them, and then refer them to counseling, and, and uh, built a big practice that way. And I would go to the radio station in high school and sit in on the recordings and sort of learned how to be comfortable in that environment. Plus my background as musical theater meant that I was adept at using my voice and my instrument, as we, as we call it. Uh, then when I went to, to LA, I got a, a voice agent pretty quickly, like within a week. But except for a commercial here and there, I was really making my living doing magic. And, and uh, my first cartoon, my first Actually, it wasn't a cartoon, it was a commercial. first commercial was for Disney. Mom, Dad, can we go to Disneyland? It's the Magic Kingdom! That kind of thing. But it wasn't enough to pay the bills, especially in L.A. So, oh, now this is lesson number one. And by the way... Oh, I just picked it up. The music, we're going to get back to that and how important it is to keep yourself in a somewhat hypnotized, trance-like state all the time. Never enter into the real world of the non-artists. Never enter into the real world of perceived limitations and lack. Always think, you're either thinking in terms of creativity and abundance or limitation and destructive and, and destructivity. This is what's the yin and the yang of life. So, so this is one of my keys to self-hypnosis. I have like, like world chill music going on in my house, in my car, in my ears, while I'm walking around, all the time. Um, but we'll get, we'll, we'll uh, turn to you on that, back to that in a moment. So, so I went to LA uh, to be a voice actor. I committed to that when I was in New York at film school because I went to a little art house theater in Greenwich Village and saw the original dub, uh, the streamlined dub of Akira. By show of hands, you've seen Akira. Oh, yay! That's the first summer. Hey, I'm the Akira Manga. 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 Let me see this. Wow. Where'd you get this? Uh, I got it because I am all six volumes of the original artwork. Well, it's like my favorite series of all time. Where did you get it? I've never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the limited edition version of it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> When I did my first TV special in Japan, I, they had a whole book, a whole uh, a display of books and all kinds of stuff. But I'm not a collector, I don't like things, so I didn't get any, I took a mental picture, but it was nice to hold it in my hand. Um, uh, so anyway, I saw this, so you'll find this interesting. I saw this original streamlined dub of Akira in this art house theater in New York City when I was uh, a film and performing arts student at NYU, and I thought, wow, this is the future of animation. This is, this is something I want to get involved with because prior to that, most animation was either for kids or played on two levels, sort of like Bugs Bunny. Um, but it wasn't wholly for adults or mature audiences the way Kira was. So just like, I, I liken it to say Jackie Chan, when American audiences uh, first saw Jackie Chan, he was already a big star internationally. It changed their perception of what like an action hero could be. Prior to that, it was all you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone, you know, straight man. But after him, an action hero could also do comedy. And in fact, a little tangential aside, when I was doing voiceovers and living in LA, my next door neighbor was Terry Crews, who you know is an <laughs> action hero and a uh, comedy actor. So just like Jackie Chan, sort of expanded the parameters of what was possible for in that milieu. I felt like Akira was doing that for animation 
It wasn't like there weren't Comic Cons, people didn't know what anime was, it existed, but not really in our culture. So it was pretty early on. So I got to LA, I got my voice act acting agent. I wasn't getting any auditions for stuff like this because it didn't exist yet. I was like maybe five years ahead of the curve. But I was tenacious. And that is our second lesson, if you will, today, which is if you commit to something and you really believe it, this sounds kind of earthy crunchy, but like the universe will make a path eventually. But we have no control over timing. So you have to let go of the idea that, oh, I'm going to make a, a, a three-year plan and by the time, you know, in, in three years I'm going to have made a million dollars and be famous. Like, it doesn't work that way. Uh, it, it might take three months, it might take three years, it might take your lifetime, but as long as you're passionately pursuing that worthy ideal, you are successful. And that is a paraphrase of my favorite definition of success, which is from uh, Earl Nightingale in the book The Strangest Secret. The Strangest Secret was the book that kicked off the whole personal improvement uh, movement decades ago, and worth checking out. Uh, success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. So that's where it starts, is we'll decide what you're passionate about. I sort of reverse engineered my whole life when I was pretty young. Actually, I was a double major in college. My other major was philosophy. So I took in all these philosophies and I decided to make my own. I wrote a, a ten-point code of ethics that I still live by today because I'm not particularly religious, although I was raised Jewish. Um, but I just live by the code of ethics that I wrote, not what was handed to me by, you know, a tablet that was brought down from, you know, a crazy man on a mountain thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. See visions. And yet, if that were today, it's like there's somebody talking to me and nobody can see, and it's in a ball of fire, and I'm hearing voices in my head. Like we put them in an institute. So I figured better that I make it up. Uh, so it was that, and like knowing, knowing who you are, know thyself, Socratic, right? Uh, and acropota to making my own code of ethics or uh, philosophy was a reverse engineering of what would I do with my life if I had already achieved financial success. Well, I guess that's lesson number three. Uh, I. I thought when I was 18, 19 years old, let's say I had, for some reason, it was $2 million. If I had $2 million in the bank, but my whole life ahead of me, what would I do? So I would stop talking for like 30 seconds, and you think that yourself right now. If you had a couple million bucks in the bank, and the whole life in front of you, so all the time, freedom, and all the monetary freedom in the world, what would you do? And I don't mean like sit on a beach and drink Mai Tais. I mean, what would you do that would produce something that would benefit the world. 30 seconds. Really consider it. Anybody come up with anything that they would want to share? Should I do two things? Okay. <laughs> it either... Huh? Yeah, we don't need it. That's okay. Thanks. Yeah. It either like uh, like go out and do kind of an educational history show around the world because I love history. Like a live and a stage thing. Um, uh, more like a TV show, kind of like a Bill Nye the Science Guy, but yeah, for yeah. history. Yeah. Uh, or I opened, for him. I opened for him in an event in Dallas last year. Holy crap! Definitely personal hero. Yeah, he's amazing. Or just something that I could like do to help uh, my artistic friends, kind of like uh, just like get their art out there and um, help them. Go with the first one because you can't help anybody else until you help yourself. You have to achieve something, create a network before you can expand it out to help your friends. True. Um, so just doing that exercise puts it in your from your subconscious into your conscious mind and makes it a little bit more possible. But then the path that you must walk is one of daily realization of that goal. Just moving the needle a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. It doesn't have to be big things, just a little two millimeter adjustment every day. It'll get more and more, more. And as evidence of that, it was seven years, seven years that I was in Los Angeles before I started making any money at this stuff. Uh, at voiceovers before I was able to pay the bills with it, in other words. Uh, but I didn't stop and it didn't ever feel like work and it never felt like privation because I was doing what I loved. So you have to choose well from the get-go. And 
Oh, and then the other thing that I was about to say is you are what you do all day long. It becomes what, what you what you ultimately do is a culmination of how you spend your time. So if you say you're an actor but you spend all time waiting tables, enough time goes by, you are actually a waiter. Because that's what you spend all your time doing. So I never got a job. I didn't care if I still had to drive a 1974 Super Beetle where the heat would never go off even in the summer in LA. That is what I drove for the seven years. Uh, I don't care if I had to eat macaroni and cheese or ramen noodles for 25 cents. That's what I did. The, it's not a sacrifice if you're able to still stay on the path that you've chosen for yourself. These are just external transitory things that, you're, that you are um, experiencing. Uh, so for those seven years, what I was able to do to pay the bills was magic. I always loved magic for the time I was about eight years old as well. Nobody starts with skill sets. You attain skill sets by wanting to get better, studying your craft, studying peers and what they do, and actually going out and doing it and getting stage time, flight time, as it were. A writer, so you're saying a writer, a writer writes every day. When I wrote my most recent book, which I should show you. Is it an e-book, by the way? A what? E-book? E-book. Yeah, it's also an audio book. Which is, ah, yes. Since you guys like voice, which I also brought, called Finding Focus in a Busy World, How to Tune Out the Noise and Work Well Under Pressure. I wrote that book over exactly 100 days. I did not plan it out, it just turned out 100 days. And the first thing in the morning, I, I would like, I would, you know, brush my teeth, eat, meditate, do, do stuff for myself, and then I'd sit down and write. Before answering emails, looking at social media, or anything else, I would write, because a writer writes every day. If you're a you know, painter, or you draw, or a visual artist, you do that. A little bit trickier for an actor, it's much trickier for a magician. A magician you can't magician if you don't have an audience. But you find a way to do it every day. And then over time, you get better. Uh, you know, even if you, even if, even if you don't have natural born talent at a thing, you'll at least develop skill and confidence and aptitude, uh, which is skill. So, so I wrote this book, by the way, for my kids, uh, Tiger and Nikita. They're four and six. But this is the subject of my actual keynote now about peak performance and uh, innovation and creativity and you know, putting out your best work. But I really wrote it for them because I figure as much as I fly around to live events, I'm probably going to like crash and die someday. So this will be what I can give them as a as a guide to life. And I can flip through it and, and, and encapsulate some of the ideas in a minute once I get through this. So okay, so back to the set. So seven years went by, and then Digimon, which is what most of you know me for. I play Ty, the leader of the Digimon. So when, now this is another lesson, when that day occurred of that audition, of course, I didn't know that 20 years later I would still be talking about Digimon. Because, <laughs> who the hell would have thought? It's a cartoon. And there was no Netflix, and like, that's why it's still alive, is because everybody can see it on demand. Or the fact and, they brought it back and... Or that they would have brought it back. And I'm still, like last month I was in LA recording a movie, or about a month or so ago I went to a movie theater with my kids, watch myself on the screen, <laughs> which if you haven't seen the new movie, that was pretty cool. Really good. Yeah, I, I thought it was maybe the best one, you know, since the original movie, the way they did the music and, and, the, and, the, and the drawing, the art, um, you know, the storyline was more profound, and then the fact that I was on camera for 15 minutes, that was nice. So, <laughs> Dada, that's you on the screen. Yes, and that could be you too someday. Oh, <laughs> 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 You love so, seeing that look on their face. Just but that's, my, that's 20 years later. So back 20 years, after the seven years of you know driving an old car and eating ramen, mm -hmm. and only going out to restaurants at lunchtime because it was cheaper, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It wasn't sacrifice, it was discipline. And belief in myself and knowledge that with tenacity and effort. Tenacity is not enough without effort. Talent is not enough without tenacity and tenacity is not enough if you're not committed to getting better. Just sticking it out is, is not enough in other words. Talent is not enough because people will give up when faced with obstacles in their way. But I think I, I made this quote in the earlier panel, if you weren't there, this is a Henry Ford quote, I believe, that 
Airplanes can only take off against the wind because they require resistance to attain lift. So that is the same in life. Our character is forged in fire. If we're never, there is no fire, if there is no resistance, if there is no obstacle in the way, we never get to find out what we are made of.